This is a 61-year-old man with chronic shoulder pain and MR of the left shoulder. We will begin by looking at the axial images and most superiorly we can see degenerative changes within the chromioclavicular joint. As we move more inferiorly we can see the supraspinatus tendon and more inferiorly we can see a focal area of high signal intensity within the supraspinatus extending through its entire uh, width in this area. Notice the intact infraspinatus. It's important to look at the abnormalities in all of the planes. As we move more inferiorly, we can see the biceps tendon attachment to the superior uh, portion of the labrum. More inferiorly, we can see the subscapularis tendon with its normal attachment to the lesser tuberosity. Somewhat more inferiorly, we can see sideways dark low signal intensity triangles representing the anterior portion and posterior portions of the labrum which are normal. Coronally we will begin most posteriorly and we can see our infraspinatus tendon nicely attaching to the region of the footprint to bone. As we move more anteriorly we can start to see the degenerative changes in the AC joint but notice there is not extensive impression on the superior part of the supraspinatus. More anteriorly we can see the focal high signal region within the supraspinatus extending through its entire width at the footprint or the attachment to the rotator cuff. Importantly note that the musculotendinous junction is in the normal position and there is no retraction of the tendon. We can also see the sideways low signal intensity superior labrum, no signal intensity within it, and more anteriorly the supraspinatus. As in other joints we always want to a look at abnormalities and normal structures in all planes to confirm our diagnosis. In this case, we can nicely see as we look at the rotator cuff, the focal area of high signal intensity within the anterior portion of the supraspinatus, and we can see this matches the focal area of high signal we saw in the axial images as well. So we have a small full thickness tear in the anterior portion of the supraspinatus without evidence of muscle or tendon retraction and the normal infraspinatus more posteriorly as well. If we look at the muscle bulk, important to look for atrophy of muscle. We can see the normal supraspinatus filling the majority of the outlet. We can see the normal bulk of the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis as well. So in this patient, we have a small full thickness one to two centimeter tear in the anterior portion of the supraspinatus tendon with the remainder of the rotator cuff appearing intact and there is mild to moderate degenerative changes in the acromioclavicular joint.